let's 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 keep going here. Ten percent in 2016. Bridget and Tamara were also marked for deterrence. What do you remember about the 2016 election and your feelings about voting back then? Well, actually, I didn't vote. I really actually never vote. It turns out that both of you were on a list held by the Trump campaign um, in which they profiled people yeah. who lived in these areas and they had you down to be deterred from voting. Yeah. They didn't want you to vote. Yeah, and that, that's very wrong because you're prejudging people. And I'm very uh, 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 upset about it because you, you're categorizing me and you're, you're saying who I am in your eyes and I'm really no one because you're already saying I can't make up my own mind. Well, should we have a look at what they yes. thought they knew about you? Yeah. Is that, is that your birthday? Yeah. Yeah? Mm -hmm. and that's your address? Yes, it is. So this is you we're talking about? Yeah. Okay, then when it comes to your personality, mm -hmm. it says you're, you're not very open as a person. I'm very open. Most you're people very, very open. much like me. I, I have, people. I make uh, first impressions very good on the first. What do you think about the fact that they hold this kind of I think they're wrong because I think that what they need to do is meet the individual. They used to have you down as a core Clinton supporter. They thought that you would definitely support Hillary Clinton. And then they moved you into a group of people who they thought could be deterred. They had, no. What do you think about the idea that people can be deterred from voting in a democracy? Oh, that's sad. That's bad. And uh, they got to do something about it. Disengage, deterrence. A lot. Lena Taylor is a Democrat and a state senator for Milwaukee. Well, we can look here, for example, at ward number 160. Yes. Um, and, and what we have here is the names um, and addresses of all those people um, and how they were segmented. But what's really interesting is that a huge number of these names were marked down for deterrence. So they specifically looked at those individuals and said, we are going to do everything to try to deter them and create ads that would do that. That is a strategic level that by no means did I know was existing. That is mind boggling. I'm and, and one of the things here is that I think for a lot of um, Republican or, or conservative leaning folks out there who might watch this specific kind of segment, um, I think that they would say, well, why wouldn't you want your opponent to have less voters like that? This just makes sense. This is a, this is a, this is a voting strategy that, or a, or a, you know, kind of a campaign strategy that makes sense. Like, of course you don't want those people to vote. And like, essentially what that means is you, you, you don't want to live in a democracy, which like you you don't want the best ideas to win you want the best like ideas that are you want your ideas to win uh not the best ideas or or the ideas that are most popular um and to a certain extent like i i empathize with that position because i want to make the world a better place and it's hard to argue with people um who are just blindly ideologically opposed to your position so like, I get it. Um, and, uh, hello, Mr. Bandit. B bad bit, sorry. Um, so, like, I, I get it, but at the same time, this particular type of campaign strategy flies in the face of democracy and pretty much all of our normal conventions. We, usually we want pe as many people to vote as possible, and this is just trying its best to reduce that on like a blatant level it's not it's not even it doesn't even have like the the it doesn't even have like the veneer of like reasonability like um id laws do because id laws are specifically designed to get minorities not to vote um and we've known that for a very long time but there is that veneer of like 
if if you were to talk to someone about it in the street, you know, like, well, you know, a lot of people have ID. Like, it, it's not that hard to get ID. So, like, if I have one. So, I mean, like, why not have ID laws, right? Um, this doesn't have that. This is just blatantly, like, we're trying to get people not to vote. Right? We will, we will lie, we will cheat, we will steal to get pe these people not to vote. Or, yeah, in the case of, like, trans people, like, they're... they're, they're there are people who uh, are ideologically opposed to me existing, so. Yay. I'm like shocked that they had in 2016, all the way down to, we need to deter that one. Somebody has worked this hard to strategic. Also, this, this is a good point that she's, she's pointing out here very well. Um, like, ha there's a big difference between being like, I want to advertise be to, like, I will advertise gaming content to, um, you know, you know, 18 to 24 year old white males, right? Because they are, they're, you know, more likely to buy my video game products or whatever. Um, and there's a big difference between that. You're targeting a demographic with an ad campaign with to... We are targeting specific people that we have entire dossiers of information on. Like there, there's a, a, a huge gap there. Um, and I think that that is incredibly what, what is another level of troubling to this, this um, news story. And by the way, again, I have to emphasize, this is phenomenal reporting. This, this is the kind of reporting I wish we saw in the United States more often. Strategically. <laughs> we we still we still streaming do i have, do i have some can i get some some chats in the chat just need to make sure my my stream seemed like it cut out but there weren't okay good all right carrying on disenfranchise you to discourage you. What it should tell people is the power, right, of their vote. They are often the kinds of kids that are called super predators. No conscience, no empathy. Clinton already had baggage <sighs> with black voters. It's still so her historical comments on black youths were weaponized clip. to damage her further. No conscience, no empathy. We can talk about why they ended up that way, but first we have to bring them to heal. Super predator messages were pumped across the airwaves, the internet, and into black communities. Yeah, I, AKA, you can 100%, uh, you can 100% see why these ads were very effective. Um, also, Mr. Bad Bit, uh, this, this video is, um, from Channel 4 News, it's a UK outfit, um, they, uh, with the British, the BBC or the British Public Public Broadcast Service, um, and uh, they released a report just a couple days ago about um, the Trump campaign in 2016, how they, tar how they targeted black voters in the United States. Um, so that's what we're going over. Okay. We discovered the campaign spent $55,000 targeting the message at black voters in the state of Georgia alone. Manan Sabir was on the deterrence list and explained why he didn't vote. At, in my heart during that time, my thoughts was that she was supporting black men uh, uh, going to prison for I mean, a period of time. Let me show you one of the, one of the commercials, guy? the Super Predators commercial. Very fine looking, very fresh hoodie. I like it a lot. I suppose what it means is some of those commercials that criticized Hillary, they were targeted at you. Oh, probably. Probably targeted all the way. Isn't it possible that some of that advertising influenced you at the time? It's possible that it, it, it influenced somebody, but it, does, it doesn't influence me. Again, I, I know I said this earlier, but if if you think like this guy does, advertising is actually more effective on you. Um, and given that 
earlier in this video, we saw that uh, this particular targeting strategy of deterrence lowered voter turnout by an average of 20%. Um, it, it's, it's likely that it worked on a lot of people, okay? Um, and Mr. Mr. Badbit, ID laws, Jerry rigging districts, getting rid of of polling places, bringing back Jim Crow era discrimination. Yeah, uh, I mean, basically that's what uh, the conservatives are trying to do in the United States. It's just that they're trying to do it now with a veneer of reasonableness, or you know, hiding it underneath, like you know allocating funds like to to different uh programs or districts or denying funds to others like they they try and do it now more in a more sneaky way and more like a, a more a sneaky economic way um like for example like a lot of white people who don't know how to pick up on dog whistling won't necessarily read trump saying like we have to protect suburbs from low-income housing as what he really means keeping black people out of white suburbs like that's what a lot of a lot of people aren't going to read it like that but that's what he means that's what his dog whistle means um so yeah let's continue on this is just how uh this is how fascism adopts its racial iconography in 2020 i guess like you, it, you feel confident it wouldn't have done no i, I i'm almost like a hundred, I'm a hundred percent sure. Can, can you really be a hundred percent sure that advertising doesn't influence you? I mean, we all say that, don't we? <laughs> we are. <laughs> we can't know True. what effect these ads had on each voter that saw them, but for the first time in 20 years, black turnout fell. First Brad time in was Trump's digital director years. in 2016. That's incredible. We didn't run any kind of um, suppression and or uh, campaigns in any way that ran to, I don't think we actually, we didn't run on a campaign, I believe, um, um, I would say uh, I'm nearly 100% sure we did not run any campaigns that targeted even African Americans. Just we didn't run any campaigns that targeted African Americans, says the head of the Trump campaign, that whose database just revealed that they directly targeted African Americans. Um, also, that guy was arrested the other day for, like, beating his wife and, like, uh, threatening to kill himself. So, like, maybe we should stop trusting these clowns. Fight the color you was born with here in America. The only colors that matter are the colors of the red, white, we I do have to say, I really love the energy that this guy has, and I really wish that on we on the left could co-opt that kind of language um, and rhetoric into our own movement, um, because I think it would disempower uh, the the fascist uh, and, and the fascists and conservatives on the right who have kind of like taken that iconography as their own. Um, I, I think, I think, I think we need to reappropriate that. I think, I think it, if we could get that kind of energy and that kind of, um, like delivery for patriotic messaging on our side, I think that would do a lot of good. I can't tell you how many messages were targeted at black voters or what was in them because Facebook won't tell us. What we know is the Trump campaign spent $44 million on Facebook and pumped out almost 6 million different ads. The company claims it does everything it can to stop misinformation and voter suppression online, but they have chosen to keep the ads used in the 2016 campaign secret. Which, isn't that weird? Like, we need leftist <laughs> churches 2020. No, no, we don't need we don't need leftist mega churches. We need we we just we need you know we need we need our version of like Rocky, you know, like or like you know you know Apollo Creed and Rocky, like he comes out and he's like dressed in like the red, white, and blue and like the patriotic flag. We need stuff like that, you know. Um maybe maybe our version could be like 
drag queens or something. I don't know. Um, but it's super weird that Facebook doesn't doesn't reveal what these ads are. Like, what? Why not? Like, wh why would they keep that a secret? That seems super sus. Um. Yeah, Mr. Badbit, you can just call me Jack. Uh, my username is Riverboat Jack, and my my nickname is also Riverboat Jack. Uh, like like real people have called me that in my life, so uh, I, either one is fine. Um, I can tell that story uh, another time after we finish this segment, maybe. And my view is that if you can't run your own house, you certainly can't run the White House. Young, female, and black, a key target for deterrence, according to the data. There is so much at stake in this election, and that's why I'm supporting Hillary Clinton. This ad wasn't from the official campaign, but an apparently independent political action committee, also run by Cambridge Analytica. What do you mean? I just don't believe what I'm saying. Okay, but you're an actress. I'm not that good of an actress. They have denied any illegal coordination and data sharing that? between the groups. This ad aired on TV in Ohio and Pennsylvania. Confidential campaign records also show Facebook was paid $19,000 to distribute it. We showed our findings to Jamal Watkins, vice president of the NAACP, one of America's leading civil rights campaign groups. I, I feel you, Case of Bros. Tonight has been so, so much. Um, to be honest, I'm getting through it by just streaming my feelings out and, and talking about stuff. Um, I understand that debate was... It was a lot. There was a lot of, like, racism and a lot of fascism just directly on display, and it was just f so comedically awful. Um, also, hello, Isaiah. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, it's not surprising that Facebook wouldn't release these ads, but I, I don't know. See, it, it, it also seems really weird. <laughs> um, yeah, honestly, honestly, bad bit. It was like, um, it was like a, an episode of The Office. Um, like when The Office first aired, I remember watching certain episodes and cringing so hard that like I felt physical pain in my soul. And that's what I felt like watching a lot of the sections of this debate. The thing that's shocking slash troubling about this, you know, is that there's this category of suppression, that deterrence part. So we use data, similar voter file data, but it's to motivate, persuade, encourage folks to participate. We don't actually use the data to say, who can we deter and keep at home? That just seems fundamentally, it's a shift from, from the notion of democracy. It's actually undermining inclusion and participation. It's not may the best candidate win at that point, it's may the best <laughs> bad, bit, bad bit, yes. This debate was like Scott's tots times five. Holy shit. That was, that was a really good poll. I appreciate you. Well-funded machine suppress voters and keep them at home, thereby rigging the election so that someone can win. When you think about suffrage for women, when you think about the black community suffering from poll taxes, misinformation and disinformation in the, in the early part of last century, we actually have wrestled with that and said, that's not right. That's not who we are as a country. So to translate that type of behavior onto a social media digital platform, it's the same thing. What do you think of Facebook's role here? I don't believe Facebook has fully disclosed their role and fully disclosed the types of ads that were run, who was involved, and literally how they may have been embedded in, say, the Trump campaign to make this all come to life. And so when you look at this type of research and this type of intel, it's not just egregious on a sort of fundamentally moral level, but it's egregious when it comes to a higher level of what it means to be a part of the American ethos. And that's a really good point that he just made, like, and probably linked to why Facebook hasn't released, like, what ads they that were run on the platform. 
because maybe it does and and again this is me speculating i have no knowledge but it seems to follow that maybe it's to cover their own butt because there were people from facebook directly involved in the trump campaign um that's not unthinkable to me given how many special interests were involved in the trump campaign so facebook is a very about. profitable platform it reaches you know billions of folks every day it doesn't need this kind of money, meaning if it were to monitor and check these suppressive ads and say this is not the platform for this type of misinformation, disinformation, suppressive tactics, Mark Zuckerberg would still live well and eat well. True. What happened in 2016, of course, was not restricted to Milwaukee. We found the same in black neighborhoods from Miami to Atlanta, from Richmond to Cleveland. America's reckoning of Donald Trump will come in just a few weeks' time. In Milwaukee, campaigners are pouring their efforts into getting black people to register to vote, determined that the very people the Trump campaign tried to deter from voting last time will make their voices heard in 2020. Said, I need a chief. Yeah. I need See, since uh, 2016, elections have changed, and so has Facebook. What happened with Cambridge Analytica couldn't happen today. We have 35,000 people working to ensure the integrity of our platform, created a political ads library, and have protected more than 200 elections worldwide. We also have rules prohibiting voter suppression in our... I can't read fast enough, I guess. Um and are running the largest voter information campaign in American history. Okay, Facebook. So, yeah. Uh, I think that that was an incredible bombshell of, like, reporting, and they, like, went on the ground, they followed up with a bunch of these people, they found out like the percentage of people who actually didn't come out and vote. Um, they followed up to see like who didn't vote and who did. And I, I think that excellent reporting. I wish we had more of that. 